Thank you. Picking up on the gentleman from Missouri, I hope that in designating CIFIs you would focus on the size of the liabilities, not the size of the assets. Lehman Brothers didn't have a problem with too many assets. The problem was too many liabilities. When you focus that on an unleveraged uh, mutual fund, they don't have any liabilities unless you fear that uh, their depository safeguards are inadequate and somebody's absconded with the securities. If I pick to a particular fund and they invest, uh, the ups and downs are mine, not theirs. And as to insurance companies, we saw in the greatest stress test ever, 2008, that every entity that was directly regulated by state insurance regulators came out fine. Um, you compare that to all the other regulators and it's, uh, it's, it's quite a record. Um, got a uh, parochial question for you here. Uh, the New York Fed represents under 20 million people. The, uh, uh, the San Francisco Fed, 65 million people, three times as many. New York Fed, I mean, one approach, and we've discussed this before, is breaking up the San Francisco Fed. We'd like to have an L.A. Fed. But uh, I want to bring up something else, and that is, could you go back to your board and at least say that if you got more than 60 million people in your region, you get a permanent seat on the uh, FOMC, not just New York. They're not more than three times more important than we are. So the structure of the Federal Reserve System was carefully debated by Congress um, when it established the Federal Reserve. We were mining for gold back then. I agree with you that there have been many changes in the um, economic landscape of our country since mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve was established. Um, but, but you could establish a practice that any bank that represents over 60 million people always has a seat. This, this would be something Congress would need to do. And uh, it would be um, a great if, if you could do it, but I'm going to go it's, on. It is not something another. that we could do. I, I think we'll, 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 get, we'll do a legal analysis on that. At least your heart's in the right place, and it, we'll, we'll show you a way that you can do it. Well represented, and um, let, let me move on to another okay. issue. You've got a bunch of economists who are telling you that maybe it's time to take away the punch bowl. Maybe a couple meetings from now. We're not economists here, but we all have districts that we are in touch with in a way your people can never. And let me tell you, it ain't good out there. It's not ready. It's not a punch bowl. It's a lifeline. And uh, whatever you're being told uh, as to when to, quote, take away the punch bowl, add another six months or spend some time in my district, one or the other. Um, the, um, the, your statutory mandate asks you to have maximum employment. But there are those who are saying that, well, maximum employment, that's an unemployment rate of 5.2, 5.5. There are two possible definitions of maximum employment. One is what Congress intended, because we speak our own language. Maximum employment means everybody who wants a good job gets a job. Then there is the economist's view that, well, maximum employment is as low as you can get the unemployment rate without wage inflation. America needs a raise. Are you for maximum employment, even if that means there is some wage inflation? Well, certainly um, faster growth in wages would be merited just on the basis of productivity growth. And I fully expect that as the labor market continues to strengthen, as I hope it will, that wage growth will move up and Americans will find that they are getting a raise that would be a symptom of a healthier job market, and it is certainly something that we would like to see occur. It is hard to define maximum employment. Um, beyond some point, uh, we are likely to see inflationary developments um, increase, in and that is part of our mandate, too. And finally, would you support legislation that says that uh, money of insurance affiliates that are affiliated with a failing depository institution cannot be transferred to save the depository institution without uh, the consent of the state insurance regulators? I am um, sorry, I haven't had a chance to consider, to consider such. Okay. I will ask you to respond for the record. Okay.